Well, there are no longer any survivors of the Tulsa race riot of 1921. The last to die was 109-year-old Otis Clark, who passed away nearly five years ago. But long before that, a Tulsa photographer and historian began documenting survivor stories, and some of that work is now part of the permanent collection of the new Smithsonian African American Museum in Washington, D.C. As part of Black History Month, we hear from a Tulsa man who began chronicling the stories in 1992. Of the first black Coca-Cola franchisee. Award-winning photographer Don Thompson not only has an eye for capturing a person's essence, but an ear for understanding his subjects. In 1992, Thompson and Tulsa historian Eddie Fay Gates wanted to interview black Tulsans whose families had resettled in Tulsa from the Deep South. They came to start more prosperous lives in Tulsa's Greenwood District, which was known as America's Black Wall Street in the early 1900s. Some of the people they talked to remembered the riot of 1921, which destroyed Greenwood, but didn't want to talk about it. Some were reluctant to tell their story because they didn't want to go back to that era of bitterness, hate, you know, oppression, and so forth. It was something too frightening for them to try to recollect. But eventually, they did open up about what they experienced, some uttering their remembrances for the very first time. Doing the interview was sort of like, you know, I'm relieved. Thank you for coming because I feel better. They felt better after they told their story. They had held this in for 80 some odd years or over. After the riot erupted, Tulsa's Greenwood District burned quickly. Some fires started by white rioters with flaming torches. But Thompson says he learned from survivors why the hundreds of businesses and homes burned to the ground so fast. Eyewitnesses said there were airplanes flying overhead, dropping nitroglycerin bombs out of their airplanes. And uh, some deny it, but eyewitness accounts, and we've heard this from some of the survivors, said that yes, they did de hear airplanes flying over Greenwood, dropping nitroglycerin bombs on Greenwood. Thompson says all the survivor stories shed new light on the worst race riot in American history. One of the stories that really stood out and one of the most dramatic stories was the interview that we had with Miss Rosa Davis Skinner. Rosa Davis Skinner recalled walking and running north on the railroad tracks out of town with other scared Greenwood residents to escape the violence and destruction. Thompson says Skinner told of one young woman fleeing who began miscarrying a baby and that anguish overcame them. They had no way of bearing it. They couldn't figure out what to do. One of the men that was in the group with them offered a cigar box that he had with him. They put the baby in the cigar box and buried it along the railroad tracks. Miss Skinner, as she was telling the story, began to cry. George Monroe's story was also very poignant. Years after the riot, Monroe rose to prominence, becoming Tulsa's first black businessman to own a Coca-Cola franchise. But Monroe always remembered the riot vividly. He was a youngster at home alone with his sister. They both hid under a bed. As the rioters were in the house setting fire to various areas, one of the rioters stepped on his hand and uh, he started to scream. His sister immediately put her hand over his mouth to keep him from screaming so they wouldn't detect and kill them. George Monroe said that his sister saved our lives. Monroe told Thompson as the white arsonist went out the front, he and his sister escaped the flames through a back door. Thompson says remembering what happened in Tulsa in 1921 is an important part of America's black history. Certainly we don't want to forget what happened in 1921 in Tulsa. We don't want that to happen again. But by remembering and going back and reflecting on that, we tend to come together. We tend to, we tend to come together as a people to, to, to see that something like that never happens again. That hate will not prevail. Thompson attended the inaugural opening of the Smithsonian's National Museum of African American History and Culture last September. It is there that 17 of his photographs will remain as part of the permanent collection to document a painful chapter of American black history.